Okay, but let's turn to tonight's big story and it comes today from the United Kingdom that has voted for change and how. In a landslide victory, the new Prime Minister of Britain will be Sir Keir Starmer. He's been appointed a short while ago by King Charles to lead the country after the Labour scored a dramatic victory with one of its highest ever mandates. Ousted Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has suffered a big defeat even though he won his own constituency. In his resignation speech, Sunak accepted that he had heard the anger of the people after the Tories were routed off, out of office. In fact, Britain showed that you can cross 400 seats. The Labour Party has done it by becoming Char So Par 14 years after being ousted from power. Take a look. The 4th of July night, as the counting began, stretching to 5th July morning, it turned out to be an astonishing result. Beyond the stupendous scale of Labour's overall victory, it was a night of shock results, big swings and unexpected upsets. The incumbent UK Prime Minister won from the Richmond constituency but lost his job at 10 Downing Street. To the country, I would like to say first and foremost, I am sorry. I have given this job my all. Sir Keir Starmer moves on from being the leader of opposition to the top job in the House of Commons with a stunning victory of scoring 400 plus seats. We've changed the Labour Party returned it to service and that is how we will govern country first party second the man whom starmer replaced in 2020 as the leader of labor party jeremy corbyn won convincingly fighting as an independent as his former party barred him the leader of the liberal democrats ed davy after an action-packed campaign where he fell into a lake careered down a water slide and did a bungee jump in antics retained his outer London constituency of Kingston and Subiton. His party has achieved its best ever result at 70 plus seats. Tonight the Liberal Democrats are on for our best results uh, for over a century and I'm really proud that our party has fought so positively during this campaign, particularly putting the reforming and fixing the crisis in our health and care system right at the forefront. And the many Liberal Democrat MPs who are being elected tonight are going to continue to fight to sort out health and care so the people of our great country can get the health and care they deserve. Conservatives had the worst night. Not only were their numbers reduced, big shots like the former Prime Minister Liz Truss, Defence Minister Grant Shapps have lost. Scottish National Party has been reduced to single digit from its previous tally of 46 in 2019. Yeah, I feel, I, feel, I feel better today than I did yesterday, I think. Um, I feel pretty tired. I was up all night watching it. So, um, yeah, excited, excited for something, something needs to happen, I think. Um, I think the country needs it. Um, it's not the same. You know, I, I, was in, I was a child in 97. I don't think it's quite, it's quite that kind of spirit. Um, but I'm hopeful that the new government will come in with some plans. I think, the, you know, I think if, they, if they move quickly, then we can kind of cap. We might be able to find some hope, even though it doesn't feel like it, they've managed to find it in the campaign so much. I think the future will be better. I think the future will be more better now. So since the Labour Party is, is in power now, I think the country will be more better in terms of job, in terms of safety. So there will be more of protection in the country and more job for the country. British newspapers have hailed the Labour landslide, but Sir Keir Starmer, as the new Prime Minister, has a tough task to deliver to satisfy the anti-establishment vote that has catapulted his party to power. And joining us now is our international affairs uh, editor, Geeta Mohan. She's there in London. Uh, Geeta, it's been quite a day. Uh, landslide, historic victory for the Labour Party. Rishi Sunak is out. And as is always the case in Britain, the, uh, they've all left their uh, official residences, unlike it happens in India where they overstay. But I just want to ask you, Geeta, uh, Sunak, was this completely expected, the scale of the defeat? Well, completely expected in terms of defeat, yes. 
the numbers were staggering when it comes to poll analysis and poll uh, opinion polls. Uh, some of them were saying that he would uh, that the conservatives uh, that the Labour will get about 480 seats. That would have been historic. It would have broken Tony Blair's record, Rajdeep. But that did not happen. Uh, however, uh, uh, and above 400 was something that was predicted. Uh, I went around speaking to people. Even conservatives uh, had this mm -hmm. gloomy. You know, uh, th there was this entire atmosphere sort of gloom. They knew that they were losing. They knew they were losing badly. Uh, but when the opinion polls started coming in and they said 480, that's the time when most of them had almost given up. So expected, but the numbers are staggering. It's a, it's an absolute defeat for the Tories. And uh, for the Labour, it's an opportunity, an opportunity to do things, legislate the way they want to, bring about right. the change that they want to, because they have the numbers, Rajdeep. Uh, what, you know, where does this leave Rishi Sunak? Where does he go from here? Uh, he's a very wealthy man. Uh, does, he, uh, does he remain the face of the opposition? Uh, Jeremy Hunt has also won. So who, who, is, who will be the face now of the Conservatives? Will Rishi Sunak continue in that post? Or is he virtually now, uh, is that the end of the road? Well, he has won his seat, so he still remains a member of parliament, but he certainly will not be the leader of the opposition. Now, the Conservatives will have to again uh, come together to decide who the next leader of the opposition is going to be. It certainly is not going to be Rishi Sunak uh, because he led the party to such a defeat. Many of the Conservatives over here complaining they did not even know that uh, that he was going to call for a snap polls. And, they, and many of them very upset, saying that he... Uh, blaming him for the kind of defeat and for them having lost their own seats. Uh, so he certainly is not going to be. We'll have to wait and see who really becomes uh, the leader of the opposition over here. Conservatives, uh, Rajdeep, this time around, it's a very different party altogether. A lot of infighting. Everybody over here now staking claim. So again, we'll have to wait for a while before we actually hear of a name uh, that, who's going to lead the Conservative Party in Parliament. Well, one final question, Geeta, an interesting uh, element, uh, trivia. Uh, at least 10 British Sikhs I saw at the last count have been elected. So pretty impressive uh, Sikh contingent in uh, the House of Commons. Well, there are quite a few, not just Sikhs, but also from the Indian community itself. Uh, the diaspora has come out in full strength from the Conservative and the Labour. There are some interesting snippets, uh, Rajdeep, and it will be interesting to see whether they're going to be part of the government or not. Now, we do know that the Labour has had uh, MPs and leaders who have raised issues uh, uh, regarding India, raised concerns regarding India, whether it's Khalistan, Kashmir or human rights issues. We'll have to wait and see whether if they'll be allowed to do that because uh, the party chief, as also Keir Starmer and David Lamy, all three of them have uh, very mm -hmm. clearly spelled out that no anti-India sentiment would be allowed this time around. So it is a different party. They will allow a lot of Indian diaspora representation, but will they allow uh, anti-India statements and anti-India elements is something that we'll again have to wait and see. The manifesto was very clear, Rajdeep. It said, enhancing strategic cooperation with India. It uh, it made India uh, as, as a very important focal point when it comes to their foreign policy. So I don't think they're going to ruffle feathers with New Delhi at this point in time, at this juncture, when there are too many wars and the situation right. around the world volatile. Okay, let's leave it there, uh, Gita Mohan. Uh, good to have you there joining us from London, giving us a perspective over what's been a dramatic day in British politics. Thanks so much.